What was your writing process on your first screenplay? My writing process on my first screenplay, I took a writing course in college and at Valencia College after I had left UCF. And during the course of the college, you had to write a script uh, during the course of the class. And so I wrote the script, which ended up being my first screenplay there. I was really influenced by a humanities class that I had taken there that was basically like a biblical history lesson. I grew up going to a Christian school from kindergarten through 11th grade. So I'd read the Bible back and forth. Like I was, I was definitely one of those smart kids that was like, well, wait a minute. The Old Testament says eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. And the New Testament says turn the other cheek. Which one does God want me to do? And it'd be like, Ugh, you know, but I was very inspired by the actual historical references. And so I wrote a screenplay based on the book of Lilith, which is a deleted book of the Bible uh, about the true Genesis before. And so I wrote that script while in screenwriting class. And I was like, okay, if I can write a script, I, I realized very quickly, okay, to make a movie, you got to utilize what you have. So I'm like, we have a house by a lake. We have actors, we have this stuff. All right, I'm gonna write a movie about a house by a lake, you know, with the things we have access to that won't cost us anything. And so I wrote this script during that class. And I'm sure it had certain structures that you had to follow for the for your grades and everything, but that's how I did that first script. And what was actually kind of sad about that is a couple years later, I made the movie, and then the movie came out, and I ran into that screenwriting teacher, and I was like, look. I made the movie off the script I wrote in your class. And she was like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, yeah, well, I made the movie. And she was like, Ugh. Ugh. and I walked and was like furious. And I was so confused because I'm like, wait, I thought you'd be excited. Like you inspired me to write this thing. But then I realized really quickly that she had never made anything. You know, she had gone out to try to be a screenwriter, didn't you know, didn't, wasn't successful, and then came back to be a teacher to teach screenwriting. And so now one of her idiot students had gotten farther than she had. And that was real discouraging, actually, at the time. I was like, man, is this how it's going to be across the board? And the answer is, yeah, pretty much. You know, you have people that are obsessed, or are, you have people that are frustrated by your success, and you have people that do get excited for your success. And so you you eventually weed out those people and figure out who's there to to win it and and go up with you. But it was a really weird thing to to have happen, I thought. And then after that, it was like, okay, you know, I learned the fundamentals and I'm definitely much, I'm definitely more of a timeline-based writer. So I'll jot down a ton of ideas and then I'll break down a timeline. Like, okay, here's a scene, here's a scene, here's a scene, get the whole timeline sequence and then go back and start laying out the actual script with dialogue. Uh, because I, I like to focus on the beginning and the end. You know, the last 30 seconds of your movie is the most imperative because that's the last thing the audiences leave with. So you really want to focus. You got to have a really strong ending and a really strong beginning because you got to hook them early and you got to let them leave excited about the movie. And, and then the middle just connects them. So I would usually always write the ending first and then the beginning and then the middle to be able to make sure that like you got the, the big pack, the big punch at the end, and, and then the big beginning to get you there. And that was always the hope. Because um, the movie should be a roller coaster, you know, it should be up and down and all over. And you're just like, by the end of it, you're like, whoo, what a ride, you know, hopefully. <laughs> so when you have the little creature inside of you that is knocking with the, with the idea, if you can't figure out the ending, do you just don't, you don't begin it, you don't start it? I mean, there's always... I think average, it takes me about three months to write a feature script because the first month will be coming up with ideas. And I'm definitely not one that sits down and just vomits a script out. I know some other writers are like, oh yeah, I wrote this in two days. And I'm like, how did you do that? That sounds ludicrous. Like, how did you, <laughs> you write a hundred pages in two days? Um, but a lot of times it's not great either when they do that. But I'll start off with an idea and usually it's ideas, and then you just keep writing down ideas, and eventually you put them in a sequence that makes sense, and you figure out ways to connect the ideas. But you don't always have it right. Like I remember my, my second feature I directed, Hoodoo for Voodoo, which is a horror comedy we shot in Louisiana. I had a completely different ending. And then I remember, <laughs> it's really silly, I remember watching Shrek 2, fantastic movie. Watch Shrek 2, and the Shrek 2 ending Suddenly I was like, that's the ending I need. I need this Shrek 2 ending 
with this big montage, big chase scene, big exciting finale. That's the ending I need. And so I rewrote the ending to be obviously not the exact, there's no ogres in my movie, but to be very similar to the Shrek 2 ending where it's like this big whole exciting thing. Because I was like, that's what I need. That's the that's a better ending. Um, I know everything is a Shrek 2 ending. I'm just going to end with a, a song and dance and chasing. <laughs> but it's, I mean, every project's different too. There's some projects that take longer or there's some that uh, take shorter. It just kind of depends on the project. But I usually jot down ideas for a month and break down a timeline and spend, you know, about six weeks like laying everything out. Um, or even shorter. I've written some shorter than that too. It just kind of depends. With the screenwriting teacher, how did you know that that was the reason that she kind of blew you off? I mean, I can't be 100% sure that's the reason, but it sure seemed like it to me at the time. Because she was really upset that I had made the movie, and I was, like, shocked. Because I would have thought she'd have been like, that's awesome, and congratulations, that's amazing. But yeah, it really, at least I could see it in her eyes where she was suddenly reevaluating her life and her life choices to be like, <sighs> like this, how did this 22-year-old kid do this? And... I didn't, I haven't been able to do this. Now, granted, that movie didn't make a lot of money. It didn't cost any money. You know, it was, it was, it's, it's pretty terrible. I wouldn't recommend watching it nowadays because it'd be like, oh God, what is this? But at the time, there was a lot of content coming out of that caliber, low budget horror that came out every week, you know, at the video stores and no actors or anything, you know, just a bunch of random stuff. So it was successful at the time. Nowadays, you wouldn't be able to have success with it, I don't think. Not real success, but. And it was based on a proverb, you said, or? That movie was called The Night Owl, and I based it on the book of Lilith, which is, in the beginning, God created Adam and Lilith, and they were equal. And this book of the Bible was deleted because the men at the time did not like the idea of a woman being equivalent to a man. And so Lilith ends up leaving the Garden of Eden, and God makes Eve out of his rib to make her less than him. Because the ruling, of course, at the time, about biblical times, the men didn't want women to have any kind of power or idea of power. And so this is one of the deleted books of the Bible that now with the Dead Sea Scrolls and things, they've found multiple ones. And so I built this whole story where the revelations is actually caused by Lilith on a very small scale. Instead of coming in with a giant trumpet of angels, it's like a back door. And it starts with a few certain elements um, that the Bible kind of alludes to, to, to kickstart the revelations. And so I made this, then I was like, oh, four girls go to a cabin for spring break. <laughs> and then the revelations happen and it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> That's basically how, it's, I how see. it kind of comes together. Um, but it's not a faith-based horror, horror film, but it's, it's, it's loosely it's, based on. It's based the on idea the of ideas of that, that okay. you know. And, um, and I mean, there's a lot of evidence of that throughout history of those books and, and Lilith and everything. It's interesting because a lot of times in culture they they use Lilith as the first vampire, and there's a there's dozens of vampire movies with a Lilith vampire character because supposedly this is the spawn of demons. Demons started being spawned from Lilith, and humans started being spawned from Adam, and that you know there's demons all over the Bible and everything. That's where all these things come from, I guess. Some of these deleted books, but uh it, it i always thought it was really interesting to see like the historical connections with biblical context especially being raised i was raised catholic but went to a christian school so i got both sides of that spectrum um but yeah i mean real real history i love i love putting real elements like connecting reality elements to fantastical things and movies because you get that little bit of groundedness but then everything's fantastical around it i think it's cool